My family butchers have been buying British beef off local farms for five generations. That's over a hundred years of selling British beef and we believe in it passionately. Through those generations, obviously information has been passed from father to son as to how to select the best animals and the best meat for us to serve to the great British public. And I brought a selection of cuts along today to actually show you different cuts of meat and what to look for when you're looking for quality British beef. That's whether you're buying it from a supermarket where you should be looking for Red Tractor or where you're buying it from your local butcher where you should be asking where it comes from. The first cut I'm going to show here is a ribeye. This has become a very popular steak. And when you're looking for a, um, a steak, what you're looking for is a nice deep red colour. And what that deep red colour tells you is that that meat has actually been hung. That means that it's been left to mature for anywhere up to four weeks so that the natural enzymes within the meat can break it down and make it very tender. A red steak won't eat as well as a nice ruby red piece of steak. The other thing you need to look, and hopefully when I cut this steak now you'll be able to see it, is marbling. Now the marbling, and you can see it there, these little white pieces of fat that are in between the meat. That marbling is an indication that the animal has been looked after very well. It's good animal husbandry. That marbling is very important when you cut your steak. What happens is that marbling, as the steak is cooked, actually bastes the meat and that adds the flavour to it. So it's not there when you finish cooking it, but it's basted the meat through that cooking process and giving you bags and bags of flavour. And that's, that's very important when you've spent good money on a steak. So that's the ribeye. If you are buying, for instance, something like a piece of top side of beef, then what you look for there is you look for a cover on the outside, some fat. That's whether it's top side, silver side, rump, rib like this, any of the roasting joints. This cover, and that's butcher speak for fat, actually protects the meat during that hanging process. So it means it can be hung a long time without the meat underneath deteriorating. And that again is the uh, process by which the flavour develops within the meat. And that, and that is absolutely crucial to have this fat on the outside. Fat also is important with roasting joints when you're actually cooking it, because again, it bastes the meat. It keeps it from drying out and that fat just soaks into the meat and keeps it nice and moist through the cooking process. So it's, it's absolutely crucial that you buy meat with a little bit of cover on it. Not lo lots, but a bit because it's going to help in the cooking of the meat and, and that's going to give you a great British roast. Something like a, a rib like this, you know, makes a fantastic centrepiece for Christmas. Um, I always recommend my customers to buy bigger pieces of meat. I always find that a roasting joint, a big piece of beef, always cooks better than a smaller one. Somehow it doesn't seem to overcook and you needn't worry because even if you've got some left it slices up beautifully for cold sandwiches. Uh, you can have it the next day with some like onions and vinegar on or mustard or horseradish sauce. It's not going to be wasted and rather do that than buy a small little piece and cook it too much and not enjoy it. So that, that's your roasting cuts. Now I want to move on to some of the other cuts of meat that are inexpensive, what I would call the value cuts. These cuts, you need to put more work into them, but it, is, it gives a fantastic flavour to the meat. What it means is you've got to cut them slowly. I brought a couple of examples here. This is, this is skirt. Skirt is very, very versatile. The Americans use it on barbecues. Um, we use it mainly for casseroles and that. One of the properties of skirt is that you can see again you've got this fat running between the, the meat. And the thing is with that fat, again, it disappears during the cooking process. And if you're cooking something like a beef in red wine or beef in ale, any of those things, when that fat disappears, the liquor within your casserole or your stew actually goes into the gaps that that fat was in. And that's why it's so beautiful to eat. When you actually bite into it, you get the full taste of the flavour and the tenderness of the meat. Everything's there with it. Skirt can even be used in stir fry. So if you actually cut it across the grain in very, very thin strips like this, you can actually make something like teriyaki beef out of it because you can push your finger straight through it. You see how, how tender it is. And that's supposed to be a cheap cut. Yeah, but if it's cut the right way by your butcher, then it can be very versatile and used in lots of things. The other cut I brought here is shin beef. If you go into your butcher or your supermarket and you ask them for a, a ring of shin, this is where the bone was through the middle 
and the shin is, is this part on the outside. You can perhaps see from that all these little tiny bits of, well, they're not gristle, they're, they're more like fiber in the meat. And this is, again, crucial. This is a slow cooking meat. And if you cook this for three to four hours, all those little fibers all disappear. And what they do is leave behind a great tasting meat. And what happens is the liquor from the fibers actually thickens the casserole, which means it will go further. So it ends up that you can feed more people out of it. The next cut we've got here is the flat rib. The flat rib is brisket on the bone. This is another great casserole cut. And obviously, because it's got the bone in here, that's going to, again, add flavour to your casserole. And it's a cheap cut. Done in a red wine or an ale sauce, anything like that, or just with ve winter vegetables, make a fantastic casserole. And last but not least is the chuck. Now, the chuck of beef, or the shoulder piece, is, again, a great casserole cut. A lot of butchers will actually strip any of the fat out of this and make it into diced steak. So the job then is half done for you. It's already diced, already cut up, just ready to be browned off and go straight into your casserole. Alternatively, you can buy it as a steak like this, but I would recommend that you ask your butcher to actually give you the neck end, which is the leaner of the end of the shoulder piece. And again, that'll make a fantastic casserole. So just to summarise, if you want to buy quality beef, you should be buying British beef, with a red tractor mark if it's in your supermarket or from your local butcher you should be asking him the provenance of his meat and usually it will be local British farm assured beef the best in the world